Now, an almighty tussle is being waged between residents of small towns in Romania and giant energy corporations. The battleground? Fracking. Romania is believed to be sitting on 51 trillion cubic feet of shale gas. With massive amounts of money to be made, the energy giants are circling, but the people of Romania are having none of it. Horak O'Brien reports from Romania. The heart of Transylvania, the middle of the night, the front line of Romania's fracking backlash. No, 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 this is totally public. Yeah, yeah. Activists cut cables used for seismic testing by fracking companies, the process of drilling into the earth and creating cracks that release shale gas. What we are doing is actually a um, guerrilla um, attack against them, and um, they are not really prepared for this kind of reactions from, uh, from us. But uh, we are starting to fight back. We have to do these kind of things. Yeah. It's our duty. If you thought fracking in the UK was contentious, welcome to the village of Mushna. Here it's about more than shale gas, it's about flexing new muscle against outside interference, against heavy-handed government. As the sun comes up, miles of cable drag through the street. <laughs> These villages are becoming lightning rods for a national debate about fracking here. Testing relationships with the state, with the police, with the men from the fracking companies. But this isn't just the usual environmental balaclava brigade. The village of Pungest, near the Moldovan border. One of the poorest places in the European Union. Life here feels suspended in another time. Then last year, the men from the giant American energy company Chevron turned up. They handed out free t-shirts and yogurts and announced this as the site for the country's first frack pad. Villagers say they didn't know they were coming. It didn't go down well. Introducing the most unlikely of eco-warriors. Farmers, their wives, arm in arm with a deeply conservative local Orthodox church. The local protest poster girl, 60 year old Sylvie. She became the stuff of local legend after featuring in a television report when she appeared to be taking on riot police during a protest against fracking last year. Sylvika invited us round for dinner. That's okay. Cheers, it's loads. Thank you very much. It's fantastic. Who told you that you'd get poisoned and that your flesh would come off your bones? And Who did you hear that message from?
i varje plundjedisa. The Orthodox Church here is powerful, the local parish priest anti-fracking. So when Silvika talks about it, the language is apocalyptic, biblical. Across the country, despite the protests, the fracking work carries on. Today, a team from a prospecting company have turned up to lay cables for seismic testing. In the absence of meaningful dialogue, panic. They just invaded my, my land. They just invaded my garden. It was tens of them. If you hadn't come just now, what would have happened? They would have fracked it, I don't know. They wanted to dynamite it. There is dynamite all over here in the land. And they want to, to make it explosive. Do they have permission to be on your land? Never. They never asked me to. The prospectors go into reverse. For now. The capital, not a horse and cart in sight. There is, though, an anti-fracking protest camp in University Square. The government in Bucharest, like our own, is trying to encourage shale gas exploration, a desire for less dependency on Russian gas, the driver. At minus 10 degrees, you become painfully aware of how important the debate around energy security is in a country like this. You also become aware that the fault line around the debate when it comes to fracking runs all the way from rural Punjest into the heart of Bucharest. This is one of the men that gave fracking the green light here. Uh, consider că descoperirea unor eventuale rezerve de gaze uh, neconvenționale pe teritoriul României este o, o oportunitate care trebuie valorificată. Chevron told us that fracking techniques have been used safely and successfully throughout the world for decades and said they're committed to building constructive relationships with local partners. But when it comes to talking to the little person, the big energy companies in Romania have some way to go. We travel to Isvorel. Drilling for oil and gas has been going on here for years. Mariuta showed us her house where huge cracks in a sinkhole have appeared in the floor. She blames the drilling. Mi s-a dus covorul cu fata care am o fată de servici aici la mine care mă ajută la treabă, s-a dus la fund. În groapă. Mi frică să mai stau aici. Mi mi frică una să mai stau aici. Her housekeeper recovered. Marutia not so much. She wants compensation. And that's the point. There's no mechanism in Romanian law for cash generated by mining to be ploughed back into local communities. Legea petrolului aflată în vigoare în România prevede explicit că redevența și taxele, taxele încasate din acordurile petroliere se fac venit la bugetul de stat și nu merg către comunitățile locale. Nu poate să nu a putut să se existe această marjă de negociere datorită faptului că legea o interzice explicit. Back in Punjest, they say one man has benefited from the fracking pad, the local mayor. He's not doing well in the polls. The reason everybody was booing as we passed that house, it belongs to the current mayor, and he sold his land to Chevron to build his frack pad on it. And he did so amidst rumors of a historical, irregular land transfer. We tried to talk to him several times. Hello. I was told he left the village on protest day and that he's now so unpopular, he travels with police protection. 
Rumours of snouts and troughs gets everyone exercised here. The prospect of fracking, not necessarily. The end of the demo and more smouldering contempt for Chevron. The company told us they've tried to engage with the locals and had one-to-ones with over 300 villagers, but had to stop because of threats from protesters. As they disperse, we head off to the shrine erected beside the fracking site. This story is about more than fracking. It's about people who remember the old regime. It's about transparency and trust. Do you trust your neighbour? Do you trust the foreign company he sold land to? Do you trust the people you voted for?